Digital Marketing Radio, episode 144. Measuring the impact of your social media activities. DigitalMarketingRadio.com I'm David Bain and this is Digital Marketing Radio, weekly interviews with online marketing gurus. Catch up with all the previous episodes at DigitalMarketingRadio.com It's a big interview with David Bain. I'm joined today by the Professor of Digital and Social Media Marketing at the University of Missouri. He's the author of Optimal Database Marketing and the founder of the Midwest Digital Marketing Conference. Welcome to DMR, Perry Drake. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. Well, great to have you here, Perry. Well, you can find Perry over at uh, umsldigitalconference.com. So, Perry, is it essential for everyone who represents a business on social media to be measuring the impact of their activities? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I think there's certain cases, David, where it's social media is kind of for awareness. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you want to be able to measure something with respect to that, with respect to the reach, even if there's not a direct conversion uh, kind of coming off of that. So at the end of the day, yes. But I think for some, it might be a little more necessary than others. Okay, so not, not, not so important for absolutely everyone, but perhaps a few metrics here and there. Right, and right, for everyone right, there. right. So I mean, what are a few of the absolutely most essential metrics, maybe just to be keeping a, an eye on on a weekly basis, say? Yeah, well, again, I, I think, again, to measure ROI and social media, it's not just all about the clicks or not all about the likes or the shares. It's also about maybe those clicks and are you driving someone to your website, which is what we're all trying to do at the end of the day on those Facebook posts or those LinkedIn or, or Twitter posts. So again, I, I think it's getting that that conversion and that click to to put the person in that funnel is, is kind of what, what we're trying to do. Okay, okay. It's, it's a tough one because of course, um, social, we're, we're trying to build relationships, we're trying to have conversations, but um, those conversations, I suppose, don't very well um, convert necessarily to a, a direct call to action um, so, right. i mean is, is it possible yeah. to measure the effectiveness of a conversation or is it only tweets or posts that involve a, a direct call to action that it's possibly really to to measure accurately the effectiveness of them no 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 no, no. absolutely and, and i think i think it's a good point i mean a lot of the conversations i have out there on social media it, it's really to extend the reach extend the voice extend the conversation and get engagement going so again a lot of times what i'm doing is is the brand being the university um i'm just trying to gain awareness and, and get conversation going, not necessarily have a direct click at the end of the day or a direct conversion at the end of the day. And even for nonprofits, right, you know, especially if they're using, let's say, something like the Google grant or, or whatever, and they're getting free paid search money again. What's great about that is they could just be driving awareness for their causes without having to worry about necessarily getting that click or that conversion to, to prove ROI of, of that paid search money, for example. So I, I don't know if that makes sense or not. Yes, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But you mentioned Google there. Uh, is Google Plus still a social network for people to be on? I, I, I don't think so much anymore. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm really only using it for Google Hangouts at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, David, I'm not even sure. I, I know at one point in time, let's say a year ago or so, it, it was very important for SEO perspective because Google was, was wanting us to engage on it and kind of giving us credit on SEO. I don't even know so much if, if they're doing that anymore, per se. Um, but I know a lot of my friends that I engage with on social media are not on Google+. Plus. Yeah, so. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of um, a modern version of Google now that's integrated into local. And um, it, it's, it's like a layer that goes through everything rather than a conventional right. social network. Right, really, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, that's a great way to put it. And, 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 what, and what about Google or what, what about paid advertising on social media? You, 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 I mean, you talk about Google, oh, yeah. they're yeah. related to AdWords. Right. So I see, I, I hear a bit of an echo coming through at the moment, actually. It's, it's, I'm, I'm okay on, on my end. I haven't done anything. Okay, that's interesting. Do, do, you, do, you don't have a pair of headphones at all, do you, Perry? No, I don't. Okay. I don't. Oh, okay, well... I don't hear anything now. It's it's okay. It's it's, it's sometimes um, a funny system for um, not um, 
you know, being perfect and then suddenly actually picking, um, not not being able to actually <laughs> Sorry. clear yeah. out the sound. That's all right. I'll, I'll edit this. Well, me, what I did was I minimized the window and I just reopened it back up again. So if it happens again, let me know because that might have cleared it up or whatever. I don't know. That's when you said it cleared up. But, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I hear me again. No, I'll. <laughs> I, 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 should, I should be fine, but I mean, I'll, I'll edit this a little bit um, out of the okay. audio um, episode, obviously. So you were talking about Google there. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll try that again. One, two, three, four, five. I'm still hearing myself. Okay. Um, You you're looking for something to close down there? Okay, I can't I can't hear me at the moment. Okay, that seems to be fine. No, I can't. I can't. I can't. Okay. So you, you mentioned Google there, and one thing Google are particularly associated with is pay per click advertising, and that's something that the different social networks are starting to bring in. Uh, certainly, Facebook, Twitter, a bit, and um, even Instagram and other networks. What are some of the more effective? paid strategies to be considering uh, now on social media? Yeah, well, it's interesting because with respect to the conference, we're actually doing for the first time, so this is our first, fourth annual um, event for the conference, the Midwest Digital Marketing Conference, and we're actually doing paid advertising outside of the St. Louis region because we have a pretty good reach within. Um, so we're actually trying to reach outside. So our strategy is kind of a donut strategy. We're going outside of the St. Louis metropolitan area and hitting other areas like, again, Kansas City, Nashville, et cetera. And what we're doing, David, is going through, we're using Facebook paid advertising, which, again, as you know, is, is really cost effective today in terms of how we can target the same thing we're doing, targeted tweets to anybody who's talking about social media or, or and lives within a certain geolocation or has something within their profile that suggests that they are kind of a social media or a digital marketer, for example. So that whole campaign just kicked off two days ago. Um, and again, we're doing animated GIFs and again, just trying to do what we know to, to, to get that level of engagement. So I'm kind of excited. This is our first time kind of doing that. I've done paid search two years ago. Um, obviously a little more costly, um, but this is pretty good. And also we're doing boosted posts. So we're working with some of our partners here in St. Louis, like the American Marketing Association, the Public Relations Society, um, et cetera, in terms of jointly working with each other to post and boost post within each other's networks to help each other kind of get word out about different events. So, which again, is really cost effective. You're talking like five, 10 bucks, uh, where you can really extend your reach by thousands. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so, so that's my take on that. So I'm excited to kind of see what the results are going to be. And again, what's kind of nice is I have a student run agency, which we call the lab. And so I have a lot of good, really smart MBA and undergrad students, which kind of help build out these campaigns. They do the artwork, uh, create the animated GIFs and, and all of that sort of stuff, which is, which is kind of nice. So for your Facebook advertising then, what is the main call to action that you're focusing on? Is that actually just a direct sale towards attending the event or are you driving yes. people down a, yes, okay, so yes. you're not driving people down a, a, a funnel at all. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. So I mean, we are landing them on the main um, the main conference website, but it is a vertical scroll. And as you scroll down, then you'll hit the registration button, but we are not landing them directly on the registration page. So we're landing them so they see the splash page uh, with our big logo and our byline, which is innovation without borders. So, um, but yes, we're, we're landing them on that, that conversion page after, after a scroll or two. And you talked about lots of different types of GIFs and ads, I presume. Uh, have you got to a stage where you've split tested ads, ads a little bit and actually found a more effective formula for what not, you want to do? No, not yet. And actually, I was just looking at an email before I got on the call with you um, with respect to the team that, that is building that out. And they are building out four different versions. And again, they'll be taking those to kind of look to see which ones are winning and then start shifting you know, impressions towards the ones that are that are winning. But definitely we're doing that. So we've got multiple versions uh, as well. And then we're also going to be doing some video advertising also on pre-roll. Um, so we got on, a new, on YouTube. 
or yeah, on Facebook? Yep, yep, on YouTube, yep. Okay. And again, we got a media partner that's going to be doing that for us for in-kind sponsorship. So again, so we're doing a lot of stuff for the first time for the conference, which is, which is going to be kind of nice to see kind of what works and what doesn't work. Yes, uh, absolutely. And what about retargeting? Is that something that um, yeah. you're going to do as well? Yeah, we, 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 we are not at the moment. Three years ago, I did that, and I think I kind of made a mistake three years ago because I did not set frequency capping, and mm -hmm. I was just chasing people around right and left, and they just could not get away from my logo, um, which, which I think was okay to a certain extent, but some, you know, some people were, were kind of funnily giving me a rough time about it. But again, I, I think if you do that, you definitely have to set the frequency capping so you're not abusing you know, the, the individuals. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, you talk about Facebook quite a bit there. Um, are there any other social platforms that you find are really increasing in terms of popularity at the moment and are a good opportunity potential, potentially for a business like yourselves to target users? Yeah. I mean, I, I think for, for again, the, the campus and my conference, and things along those lines. I definitely think the main social medias are Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn to a certain extent because you've got the professional, um, professional individual and groups there. So we do do just some posts and some sharing of posts on there. So I'm not doing any paid advertising. So there I'm just trying to get my earned advertising on LinkedIn because mm -hmm. a little too expensive for me in terms of their minimum. Um, you know, and again, I think the Again, for our students, for students, the conference is free. If it wasn't and I wanted to go after students, maybe I might dabble. Well, again, I don't think I could afford it, David. As I say, I would dabble in advertising on Snapchat. But, but I, think, I think the minimum there is what, like half a million or something. I don't know what it is to, 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 to play around on Snapchat. But um, you know, maybe next year if we talk, maybe, maybe Snapchat will lower their minimum. We could talk about it again. But um, well, Snapchat certainly made a lot of revenue during the Super Bowl. There was a, a lot of press about that. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, and what's interesting, too, my students right now in my digital strategies class are actually, so what I do every time after the Super Bowl is they have to pick a commercial that they felt did not maximize the use of the hashtag and come up with a better hashtag strategy to kind of pull the individual into the brand and the experience and maybe get a reason for them to tweet or to, to go to the website, for example. So the students will, I'm kind of excited, the students will be presenting on that next Tuesday. Um, and, and I think about eight different commercials they picked, so, which should be, should be nice. So are, are you finding that students in general are navigating towards newer social networks like Snapchat, or is there still the general usage of a Twitter, for example? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think they're definitely navigating towards Instagram and Snapchat for their personal use, right? Because again, they don't want to be on Facebook because that's where their mother is. So you've got that particular issue. I mean, I think they're still there to a certain extent, but not at the engagement level that they are on Instagram or Snapchat. Um, so, you know, we, we have those conversations and, and I, I get it. It was no different than when I was a kid. You know, there was no digital world when I was a kid. The last thing I wanted was my mom listening at the bedroom door, you know, while I was talking on the phone to my friends. So I, I would leave and go to the mall. So, you know, it's the same thing here with Facebook. That the last thing they want is their, you know, mother or grandmother sitting there listening to that particular conversation. But, but you know, I, I predict that, and, I, and the, you know, we talk to the kids and I talk to the kids all the time that they will be back. When they get married, they start having kids. They'll want to post those pictures of the kids back on Facebook. And then the other thing, which is funny, which I know you know, David, is virtually none of them know who owns Instagram. And when I ask them that question and I tell them it's Facebook, it's like, oh my God. You know, and I said, well, Facebook isn't stupid. You know, they know exactly where you're going. And, you know, they don't want to lose you and they're 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 gonna keep a hold of you one way or the other. But um, but yeah, yeah. So in so terms, in terms of, of measuring, measuring analytics of social media are there any third-party platforms that you're using at the moment that you could possibly recommend well i mean just kind of the stuff we use around the university obviously is is hootsuite to kind of monitor things there's another one which is interesting david and i'm curious if you've heard of it so i was at our sister university in finland in october the university of sinoke uh, which is about i guess about a three and a half hour train ride north of helsinki um, and beautiful country. It was great. I was there for like 10 days teaching digital and social media. They flew in a bunch of German students. So it was Germans and Finns. 
And one of the German students turned me on to a software called Fanpage Karma, which I think is a UK, I think it's, it's a dot UK, so I think they're from Europe. Um, and it's just a really interesting tool which allows you to put in different social handles and it comes back and gives you all sorts of metrics, helps you figure out how to engage better, you know, which posts are working, not working. And I just, I really enjoy it. And it's also kind of simple in its presentation and it works with me kind of in my teaching. So I was just curious if you had heard of it, but it, it seems like you probably have not. I don't believe I have, no. Yeah. Um, Sometimes I have, sometimes I haven't, but there's so yeah. many new tools. Oh, I know, I know. Up. They're out there all the time. You Google and it's like the 35 best, best social media tools. But, but that was one of the, the kind of coolest ones that, that I really liked. And I love it because, you know, students show me and teach me stuff almost every day. But, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. well, I'll, f I'll find um, the link to that one. I'll include yeah. that today yeah. in the show notes yeah. at uh, yeah. digitalmarketingradio.com. Right. Um, so I mean, I'm also just keen just before we move on to the second section of the discussion to actually have a think about um, any activities that are very worthwhile to do in social media, but you can't really measure. Uh, I'm thinking of um, quality interaction. Um, is there anything that um, you can recommend that people should be doing in social media, um, but um, it's quite hard to justify, but you know it's, it's the right thing to do? Um, and, and when you say people, David, are you speaking of individuals or brands or both? Or oh, oh, both, both. Yeah. right, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, and again, uh, you, you know, I mean, it's difficult to measure direct ROI to, to, to social media. I mean, there's so many platforms and, and which one is resonating. Um, I, I think at the end of the day, you just want to kind of be true to yourself, consistent, um, make sure you're out there on a regular basis, um, projecting yourself the way you want to be projected, whether that be a brand or, or a person. Um, and you well know, I mean, social media, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it. I say it a lot. It, it, it's definitely a time suck. It takes a lot mm -hmm. of time. Um, but at the end of the day, it's worth it because you're nurturing those relationships. And that's how millennials and Gen Zs want to be dealt with. Um, you know, it's, I'm, I'm actually doing, I'm, I'm finishing up my PhD. I'll, I'll have my PhD hopefully done by December. And the, um, my dissertation is actually on how universities engage with students. Now, I'm not talking faculty, but it's how universities engage or don't engage with students because universities are kind of afraid. They shy away from having those two-way conversations because they don't know what might transpire. And then I think they get concerned with legal issues and, and things along those lines. So, um, yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of heavily getting into that in the moment. And, you know, I, I personally feel like a university should be nurturing that relationship, thinking of the longer term alumni relationship that might develop mm -hmm. and, and what rewards might come from there. So, but, you know, and you can imagine, I mean, universities are very siloed and it's hard for them to kind of work in that sort of environment but but yeah no no just just kind of throwing that out there that i'm kind of right in the middle of like investigating a lot of this stuff yes yeah, so it's, it's an intriguing place to be i'm sure uh, certainly lots of big organizations and universities i would imagine could learn a lot from students in terms of how they actually use social media because right. generally the students are using it to interact effectively with their friends and colleagues right, and they don't right. have any intention to market or use it as a marketing tool they're simply use it, right. using it as a communications tool right. and as soon as marketers jump on these networks to a certain degree they spoil things a little bit because um they have intentions they have end in right. mind about um what yeah. they want to achieve and yeah. it's not yeah. really about that no no absolutely and and i mean i had just read something and actually was putting it in my paper that you know i mean the, the millennials that they want to co-create you know, the, the content, they, they want to be co-producers with the brands or the entities and, and kind of be right there. But to your point, not not be pushed mm -hmm. messages, but be a part of the development of. Yeah. OK, okay well, great. We'll, we'll, we'll segue to the second section of the discussion. So that focuses more on um, your thoughts on where digital marketing has been and where it's heading. But um, just before we do that, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Christopher Peters. Christopher actually sent me a lovely email saying, I just wanted to get in touch to say thanks for changing my commute forever. I've been looking for something like this for a long time. 
work. Well, Chris, receiving messages like that all worthwhile. So thank you too, and um, thanks for taking the time to get in touch. But let's move on to software. I couldn't live with that. So Perry, what software do you currently use in your business that if someone took away from you, it would significantly impact your marketing success? Uh, oh goodness, I mean, it, I. I, well, there's a couple of things. I guess from a teaching perspective and also just from a usage perspective, a monitoring my community that I've built, it's definitely Hootsuite is, is one of the major ones that I use in terms of monitoring hashtag usage and conversations around the UMSL, the, the University of Missouri St. Louis brand. Um, and then if there's anything else going on within the St. Louis area and just kind of monitoring those, interjecting, jumping in, and then also using that to teach with as well. Um, but one of the other things I really enjoy using and showcasing to the students again is kind of Google um, Insights, which is kind of mm -hmm. nice, which again, a lot of the students don't, don't know really about. And you know, you might look at it the same way I do. I kind of look at it as a proxy for demand, you know, because about 70% of searches are done on Google. So it, it works well when you're trying to investigate trends and things along those lines. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great resource that um, not many businesses probably spend as much time on as they should do because it can tell you a lot about seasonality and oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Perhaps even forecasting what may be popular before some of your competitors know that that's, that's going to be the case. Sure, and, and even breaking it out, David, by region, right? You could look at it within the U.S. versus the U.K. or, or just within certain states, north versus south within you know the U.S., yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's a slightly more challenging question. Uh, okay. What piece of software don't you use, but you've heard good things about, and you intend to try at some point in the near future? Oh God. Well, it it it's funny. So it it uh, I don't know if it's going to directly answer your question, but you know, marketing automation is becoming kind of a big buzzword with respect to, you know, you've got Eloqua out there, which is part of Oracle. Mm -hmm. um, and they will be at the conference, my conference, which I was pleased to hear they're going to be coming here. And again, that, that's kind of one thing, David, I don't know a whole lot about is kind of the whole marketing automation side of things and kind of what, what's kind of going on there. Um, so I actually have two different presentations going on at the conference. Eloqua will be one kind of talking to the big boys. And then we've got Hutch, um, uh, Hatchbuck, which is a smaller, they, they deal kind of with a niche market of small to medium sized businesses. Mm -hmm. And uh, Don Breckenridge is actually a startup here in St. Louis who, who started those. And he'll be kind of talking about that to the smaller sort of business owners in terms of building out that that blueprint. So I am I had just talked to him on the phone literally probably about 30 minutes before I got on, on the call with you. You know, just telling him I'm kind of anxious because that he's probably going to be one of the only presentations I'm going to go sit in on because I just feel like I don't know exactly what's going on in that particular world. And I want to understand it a little better. I, I, I kind of get it, but, but don't know the nuts and bolts of, of it per se. Yes. And yeah. there's so much functionality that's been added onto these tools, even the last six months or so. Right. I, I quite like the look of um, how Active Campaign um, has evolved over the last couple of years. They used to be just a traditional email marketing software but sure. now they're very much marketing automation yeah. and also um autopilot hq as well um they're, they're, they're a great tool that's uh, actually backed by salesforce but they're very much budget end of things and um okay. focused on small business so and what's what was that david that's hq Autopilot, oh, Autopilot H HQ. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Because okay. okay. yeah. well, I, I will, I will. I'm talking with Salesforce tomorrow because they're going to be at the conference as well. Mm -hmm. But they really wanted to talk to academics because St. Louis is pretty heavy in universities. So yeah, they really yeah. wanted to be in the academic track and again talk about what we were talking about before. You know how universities can get better at engaging with students and kind of using their platform to kind of to kind of do that but yeah 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 i mean it depends what type of person from salesforce you're talking from they may not even have heard of autopilot hq because i believe there are only right, investors right. in there i mean right. salesforce's main sure. um, marketing automation tool is um pardo right. so that, that's, right. that's, right. that's yeah. the brand that they offer for um bigger businesses but there's so much out there obviously oh yeah yeah god yeah <laughs> But moving on to I wish I would have. So I'd like you to look back on the very first day that you're involved in trying to market a business online. What didn't you do so well? What do you wish that you would have done differently? Oh, God. Um, wow. Wow. Um, 
the first time I mar I guess the first time I marketed a business online. Um, but well, that, that's a tough question, David. Um, you know, if I just think about what I did, I, I, I'll, I'll just talk about when I first came to St. Louis and I was trying to market everything I was doing here, which was my digital marketing programming, the conference, um, things along those lines. I mean, I think I understood the power of influencer and influencers and, and influencer marketing. Um, and probably even more so today, um, and probably would have spent a little more time in, in really spending maybe a little bit of money and kind of digging in and finding those influencers to really help me spread the word even quicker. Um, I mean, there, there's lots of strong influencer networks now, um, which again is, is kind of a topic we're going to talk about at the conference as well because I think it's something that's not talked about that much. Um, so I, 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 hopefully that's, that's an okay answer. Um, but, but that's yeah. a long, long approach though, isn't it? I mean, it's not really possible to build relationships with influencers quickly. Yeah, um, well, I, I guess yes and no. I guess it depends on if you're going to buy the influencer or build the relationship with the influencer, right? So, um, I mean, I think when I first came back to St. Louis, I was building the relationships um, because again, I, I was away for 28 years, so I didn't know anybody. So for me, it was really kind of finding the influencers in the space, friending them, getting them to, to see me, know me, understand who I am, being transparent and building the relationship. So yes, I think in that sense, it's, it's, it's a longer term as opposed to maybe going to a blogger's network and finding those that are really influential in your space and, and working out some sort of business relationship where they're doing posts or, or tweeting kind of on your behalf, more kind of, kind of more the paid, the paid model in terms of okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's move on to So this is a quick response, right? Okay. Ten quick questions. Just two rules. Try not to think about the answer too much, and you're only allowed to say the word both on one occasion. Ready to go? Uh, well, you're, you're making me nervous. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a go. <laughs> email or Twitter? Uh, email. Audio or video? Video. Affiliates or display advertising? Uh, I'll say neither. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Wait, Facebook yeah. or Google Plus? Uh, Facebook. Online press releases or one-on-one -on -one relations? One-on-one -on -one relations. Paid search or SEO? Uh, I'll say both. Email contact form or telephone number? Where, where was it again, David? Email contact form or telephone number? Um, they both have their purpose, but I can only say both once. I'll say email contact form. Website or app? Um, well, it's going to app, so I'll say app. Social subscriber or email subscriber? Um, I will say email subscriber. And local marketing or global marketing? Uh, I'll say local. So I we're, think that was my first ever neither. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't care for either anyway. Uh, what can I say? So, so <laughs> don't have you done affiliates in the in the past and had a bad no, experience no, with that? I haven't. I haven't. No, no. And, and probably I, I would probably say display. And in hindsight, it's just neither turned me on that much. But mm -hmm. it's no, that's fair enough. I mean, it's um, not possible to do every form of digital marketing. You kind of have to pick the method that's either most appropriate for you or the, the, the method that you prefer and, and try and become a specialist at that. Right, right, right. So now is there a score that comes out, David, at the end of this? There's not, but I have <laughs> asked uh, 144 people exactly the same questions now, so I certainly should be late and uh, produce some sort of scientific result. Right, right, there. right, 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 absolutely. Hopefully I'll get ready right back at some point. The $10,000 question. So if I was to give you $10,000 and you had to spend it over the next few days on a single thing to grow your business, what would you spend it on and how would you measure success? Um, wow. Um, I think I would, pro well, I think I'm going to come back to influencer marketing. I think I would spend it to go after the influencers to help spread my word in the most, I'll just say, organically way possible. 
Um, and so I'm, I'm currently working with a few kind of influencer networks now, but no cash is really being exchanged where it's, you know, this for that sort of relationship. And I, I'm just really starting to understand the importance of finding those influencers um, in, in kind of a, a genuine way, but if cash is there, that's fine. And, and I'm, I view it kind of as an organic means of spreading the word. Um, if, if, if that makes sense. Does that make sense, David? Is, is the, the cash, cash in their back pocket to... That um, is correct. Yes, is. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> My number one takeaway. Well, Perry, you've offered a lot of great advice in our conversation, but what's the number one takeaway? What's the single most important step that our listeners need to take away and implement in their businesses? I, I, I think it comes back to what we had said before, David. I think it's it's figure out who you are, what you are as a brand, what you stand for. I think it's be consistent in everything you do out there in social media. Don't violate the rules the, the best you can. Um, I, I have my own personal social media set of rules that I never violate. Um, and, and you can clearly understand exactly who I'm, who I am, what I'm about and, and, and what, what, what I do and, and what I do for you. Kind of. So, so I think it's important, it's important to, to build your own rules rather than actually follow the rules of someone else. Um, I, um, when you, yeah, I'm not sure. When, now, are you saying that though, as a person again, or a brand, or I, I, I don't think there's any one set of rules that that follow for everybody. If that's mm -hmm. kind of what you're saying, I think you have to figure out what works for you as a brand whether it be personal or, or, or an entity um, and given the audience you're dealing with and, and just be true to that. So yes, yes. No, yeah. great answer. No, obviously it's a tough um, question. I mean, personally, I think um, you need to follow some things, but also you need to do some things from a gut instinct that you believe to be uh, the right thing to do yourself. Absolutely. But knowing which one is which, it's very difficult to actually right. know which one to follow and which one to make up uh, for yourself. Uh, but, uh, right, that's... right, right, right. Yeah, but, and I think, David, that's hard for, especially if we talk about personal branding, hard for 18, 19, 20 year olds, you know, my undergrad students, because they don't quite understand that yet, that, yeah. that they are branding themselves, whether they understand it or not. So I, I try to closely work with them to get them to, to kind of see that and, and understand it and utilize the power of social media to, to build them to be what it is they want to be. So, yeah. An intriguing conversation. I'm yeah, sure yeah. we can keep that going forever, yeah. but... Um, I know that takes us to our discussion today. So thank you so much for your time and your advice. What's the best way for our audience to find out more about you and what you do? Yeah, I mean, I think what, what you could do, again, again with respect to the conference, it's umsldigitalconference.com, which is the Midwest Digital Marketing Conference. Or you could just Google me, Perry Drake, uh, with UMSL, and you'll find me all over there, um, out and about. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you, you name it. I'm on the social media, David. So I'm not, which I'm sure you are too. You're not hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Well, great. Uh, so thanks to Perry, and thanks, dear listener, too. If you enjoyed what Perry shared today, here's how you can help. Go to your friend's iPhone, go to the podcast app, and search for Digital Marketing Radio. Click on the show and then hit the subscribe button and make them listen too. Finally, I'm also hosting another live show every Friday called This Week in Organic. So head over to thisweekinorganic.com to find out more about that. But that's all for now. Until we meet again, adios. And thanks again for joining me. Um, great episode, Perry. Thanks, David.